setting up failover groups for your managed instance. We're going to do that today. We're also going to talk about some of the considerations you need to keep in mind when setting up that secondary. And we're going to check and see what happens when we fail over today on Tales from the Field. If this is your first time finding us over at Tales from the Field, give us a like and give us a subscribe. Speaking of subscribers, thank you to those 60% who have already hit that subscribe button. If you're one of those others that come in and like our content and like what you're seeing, hit that like button and hit that subscribe. Speaking of content, we have a roundtable that we do every Tuesday where we talk about content that's created by you, the MVPs of the community, for the data community. Also, we have this thing we call MS Tech Bits. We drop those on every Monday and Wednesday. You're watching one of those now. Let's get over to it. Today, we're going to talk about setting up a failover group within your managed instance. Here is an overview of the failover group architecture. You can read the full details in the link provided in the description of the video. We also have a list of prerequisites that need to be met when setting up a failover group. You can read through those and within the link provided in the description as well. I want to call out two bullet points specifically here. The DNS zone and the collation and time zone of our secondary managed instances need to be identical or set the same. We'll walk through that later in the video where to do that and set those up. Okay, so we're going to have two managed instances within our environment that we're going to work with. We have our Data Primary MI in the East US. That's going to be our primary. We also have our Data Secondary MI sitting in South Central US. And this is going to act as our secondary managed instance. I've deployed these managed instances ahead of time, but we will be walking through some of the configuration settings on Data Secondary MI that are really important as they can't be set after the deployment. So let's go over here to Data MI1. You can see here that we have a particular SKU. We have our pricing tier. Also down here, you can see that we have our failover group DB already set up on our primary managed instance. One of the prerequisites is that we have the same series service tier for our managed instances. You can see here over on Data Secondary MI, we have the same service tier, and we're also meeting one of the prerequisites that there are no databases on our secondary. Switching back over to our Data Primary MI, let's go to our VNet. We're going to select on peerings, and we're going to create a globally peered virtual network between our primary managed instance and our secondary managed instance. Let's touch on some important considerations when deploying your secondary managed instance. We're going to go here to basics. We're going to then go to configure managed instance. We're going to want to ensure that we have the same service tier, that our hardware generation matches. We have the same storage. V cores aren't required to match, but it is highly recommended. Let's go ahead and scroll down. This is where this gets really cool. You're going to want to select this feature, hybrid failover rights. This is really a cool feature that the product team has added. We're going to go ahead and select that. You can see some of the benefits here on the screen. You're going to confirm, but look at that. Look at this cost saving. We reduced our cost by a little over $291 a month. That's a huge cost savings. All right. So next we're going to switch through networking and we're going to go through security. But I want to go to additional settings because there's some, some additional considerations. We got to make sure our collation and our time zone matches and that we have our primary managed instance, our data primary MI selected. This is going to ensure that our DNS zone is set correctly. These items cannot be changed after deployment. So make sure you set them up correctly the first time you deploy. All right, let's switch over here to Azure Data Studio on a jump box I have here can see here, I have two of my managed instances connected. We have our Data Primary MI and our Data Secondary MI. Now our application is going to connect to our Data Primary MI, but what if there's a catastrophic event or if we need to fail over? We need to change our connection string now to point to the Data Secondary MI and do a geo recovery of our database in our secondary region. This is where failover groups really come in handy. So you can see here, I'm back on my Data Primary MI. Over here on the left-hand side of our screen within our blade, we're gonna select failover groups. 
Then once we're in the failover group screen, we're going to select add group. We're then going to type in our failover group name, in this case, data MIFG. We're going to select our secondary managed instance we've deployed. For our read write failover policy, we're going to choose automatic. And then for our read write grace period, this is where we get to choose how long we're going to wait to fail over to our secondary managed instance. Data is asynchronously moved from our primary to our secondary. So this allows us to choose a longer outage window over the loss of data. OK, so now we're going to go and hit Create. Once we hit the Create button, it's going to go to a deployment phase. And then you can see here we have our failover group summary. We have our primary instance. We have our secondary instance. We have our read write listener endpoint and our read only listener endpoint. Scrolling down, you can see here we have more information. We have our name, we have our primary managed instance, our secondary managed instance, our replication status, our read write failover policy, and our grace period in minutes. So let's copy the read write listener endpoint. With that copied endpoint, we're going to move over to Azure Data Studio here on a jump box of mine, and I'm going to paste that into the server name here. We're going to type in our credentials, and then we're going to hit connect. Once we're connected, we can see here that I have a new connection going to my data MI failover group. So now we are connected to our listener endpoint for our failover group. One other thing I want to call out here with our failover group deployed, you can see here now on our primary and secondary instance, we have our failover group DB. Let's connect to our data MI failover group listener and point and let's type in select add at server name. What I want to show here is that we are connecting to our data primary MI. What this is telling us is that the data primary MI managed instance is acting as our primary within the failover group. So we have our primary and our secondary, and this one is acting as our primary. Let's switch over now to our Data primary MI. We're going to start a failover. You're going to see here that a failover will start. Well, it's going to ask us, do we want to start the failover? We're going to select yes. We can see here that it starts the failover. And once complete, you can see here name. Look at primary managed instance. It's now data secondary MI. Our secondary managed instance name has changed as well. We have our replication state, our read write failover policy, and our grace period as well. Now, what we need to do is let's go ahead and check this in Azure Data Studio. You can see here that I'm connected to Azure Data Studio. I connected to my failover group name. I ran my select add at server name query again. And then you can see here that our data secondary MI is now acting as our primary in our managed instance failover group. All right, we deployed failover groups for our managed instance taking care of some of those BCDR needs. We also spoke about those important considerations when deploying your secondary managed instance. And we showed how you could connect to your failover group name through that listener endpoint. Hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, you know where to keep the discussion going down in those comments below. And always be good to each other. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day.